Well, hey everybody, welcome to the new shorter Wes Higgins uh, weekly wine blog. It is the 4th of August, uh, 2014, just a couple days away from sparkling harvest here at Clopepe and a couple weeks away from the beginning of harvest in, in general. Uh, I had a request today, we're going to do another video tomorrow on uh, sampling fruit, but uh, today I thought we would talk just a little bit, I took a, a request to talk a little bit about closures. So here's the problem I have with closures. So I use natural cork in my wines for about seven or eight years. And I used to think that there was bottle variation. I'd go to an event, I'd have a 12, you know, 12 Pinot Noirs all from the same year. I'd pop all the corks and smell all the wines. And I would notice four or five would smell significantly different. Maybe one out of the 12 would be corked and I would have to get rid of that bottle. Whoops, there's 50 bucks down the drain. And then a few of the other bottles were just a little not right. Either they weren't expressive, they were lacking fruit, they were a little earthier than the others. So I always attributed that to bottle variation. Well, you know what? Since I've moved to the Diem cork, which is um, uh, a super critical cork that has uh, zero TCA because of the way that those corks are actually made in the laboratory, I have discovered that opening 12 bottles of my wine under Diem, every single bottle is absolutely uniform. So what I was smelling is the best cork in the world. I was paying 93 cents for a grade 1A floor cork and between 25 and 40 percent of the bottles under those expensive natural corks were changed by a TCA infection. So what I'm saying is if say two to five percent is usually what people say, two to five percent of corks uh, add three to five parts per trillion uh, trichloroanisole TCA which is a, a taint uh, that's actually made by chlorine touching the cork during processing or harvesting. So if two to five percent uh, our corks are failing and making the wine basically undrinkable how many corks are actually changing the aroma and the flavor of a wine? To me, it only takes half a part per trillion TCA to affect a wine and change it. So at half a part per trillion, I'm going to go ahead and guess 25 to 40 percent of wines on the market under cork are changed by the chemical interaction of that cork and the wine. If 25 to 40 percent of airplanes fell out of the sky, if 25 to 40 percent of CPUs failed, Obviously, we would not you know, ride those planes or buy those computers. So why do we put it up with it in the wine industry? Is it because it's, it's somehow, uh, I don't know, uh, sexy or romantic to pull a cork out of a bottle? Well, you can pull a cork out of a bottle and use a DM cork or another supercritical cork and have absolute uniformity. You can use glass. The little glass stoppers work well, but they have to be hand applied and they're a huge pain in the butt. You can use screw cap, which I still think is the best way to... Um, to, you know, to uh, close a bottle of wine. Uh, Chateau Lafitte Rothschild, I heard, just is putting some of their wine under screw cap to assess how it ages. So within 10 or 12 years, they may be actually using uh, screw caps on $1,000 bottles of first growth Bordeaux. So uh, the, the, the idea today is I'm just encouraging uh, winemakers and everybody else in the business to consider that natural cork may be the worst possible thing that you could be doing to your wine and consider moving to a screw cap or DM if you're still using natural cork. Love to hear what you say. This is obviously going to be sort of a controversial moment. Uh, leave some messages. Tell me what you think. But in my world, I will never let a natural cork closure touch any of my wine. The DM is natural cork. It's just uh, put together with a food grade polymer after being treated to make sure there's no TCA in it. I think it's a great stopgap. But in the, pure, in the, in the best world, let's, uh, I would say, um, screw caps pretty much the way that I'm recommending most people go. Uh, let me know what you think. Talk to you soon. Bye.